Welcome back, my luxurious fleet. What does Lexus need to do in the redesign of the next RX 350? Hit that like button, I'll see you on the other side and let's get into it. The Lexus RX 350 is the best selling luxury crossover vehicle in the entire United States. It used to be the best selling luxury vehicle, period, uh, but that has now been changed though. Tesla Model 3 if you want to count it a luxury car. So let's get it back into the RX. Lexus has a winning formula with it. It's his best seller no doubt. Uh, however, times are changing faster than ever. The looming EV revolutions like I just talked about Tesla uh, and of course you have competitors with Jaguar and then all over all these other companies are coming out with EV models. So Lexus has all these different things going around it. What does it need to do to keep the RX fresh, relevant, and cutting edge? Let's get into the first thing. The first thing is going to be its platform. The current platform is a modified K platform that started way back in November of 2000 with the very first Highlander. It's a front wheel drive with an optional all wheel drive. Engines are mount tra mounted transversely and McPherson struts are used in all four corners of the suspension. It is currently shared with the Highlander, of course, and the Sienna, uh, which is the minivan if you don't know. The dinosaur of the platform is holding the RX back in a lot of ways, in my opinion. It's heavy, uh, it's limited in its suspension options. Uh, the rigidity isn't there like in a modern TNGA platform. So we're getting rid of the current Toyota K platform, which is shared uh, with Highlander Sienna. And you also saw it in other vehicles like the Venza and the previous ES350. And we're going to an all new platform called uh, the TNGA. It's probably gonna be a variant of the TNGA K, to be honest, um, that also the 2019 Lexus ES uh, is built around as well as the brand new RAV4. Uh, this will also make it lighter and stiffer and offers more flexibility with model variants, uh, which we'll talk later on down in this video. When the redesign happened for the last RX back in 2015 as a 2016 model, it was an aggressive, aggressive redesign for Lexus. And gone were the days of the boring, ultra-conservative, rounded, old people design, I guess you could say. Now we had an angular piece of sci-fi art. And the grill, well, that's straight from a sci-fi movie itself. <laughs> the RX has optional triple beam headlights, which still look great even today. Uh, this style also incorporated daytime running lights that we saw in the previous refresh that happened, I think, in 2013 for the RX. Uh, and that lasted, obviously, to 2015. But the, the daytime running lights on the current RX the 2016 through 19 variant, they're a little dated. They're definitely not as smooth or as beautiful flowing as the modern ES, UX, LC, RC, and the LS versions of those daytime running lights. The RX currently has a beautiful floating roof line uh, with an aggressive sloping rear end. While the RX does look pretty good overall in base form, maybe not the grill, We'll talk more about that later. The F Sport model really does look sharp with the mesh spindle grille that breaks up the Predator face. So let's dive into what Lexus should do about the styling of the RX for the next generation. Okay, so <laughs> the first thing we're going to talk about with the styling redesign, of course, is going to be the grille. For 2023, this grille needs to be massively overhauled. Although we're having a refresh for 2020, I don't expect the grill to change all that much, to be honest. I hope it does, but we're going to assume that it's going to stay relatively similar to what it is right now. So the grill is the Achilles heel of the styling of the RX, and you could say it's the Achilles heel of the entire vehicle. The, that grill is so polarizing that it can force people to leave the brand completely. I've had so many people walk in to the dealership, they've owned Lexuses, in the past and they just can't do it. They cannot bring themselves to buy a new RX with that current grill. So they go shop and they buy a different car elsewhere. I'm not kidding, it's that polarizing. On the other side, some people have hated it at first and then over the years it's kind of sunk in and now they're buying the, the new redesigned, well, to them it's new. They have, let's say, a 2013 RX and they're buying a 19. And they're, they're finally accepting the grill. Mainly, I think they just want a new car at this point. They've been waiting for so long. So how do we change the grill? Well, 
first of all, the chrome edge around the grill is abominable. It's absolutely disgusting. It looks like a largemouth bass with silver lipstick. That chrome edge needs to be slimmed out and replaced uh, with some handsome dark chrome, at least in the F-Sport model. We should see that dark chrome like we also see in the RC, the ES, the UX, F-Sport models that we have available. Uh, and also the IS too has a dark chrome surrounding as well. Also, the grill needs to scrap the shutter design. Those horizontal slats that go, it looks like almost like a ladder or a, a window shutter. I think it looks absolutely terrible. They need to get rid of that. The only car that it looks good in that shutter design is the IS350 or any of the IS models that are not an F-Sport. That's the only one it looks acceptable and the rest it looks terrible. Lexus has to know this. And the reason why they have to know this is that because on all their new models that have been refreshed recently, there's no horizontal grills. The ES now has a, a vertical grill. All the F Sports look really, really handsome and attractive in my opinion. And then the RC, the 2019 RC and the 2019 UX non-F Sport models, those grills look excellent. They look really, really good. They don't look that much different than the, the F-Sport models. They did a really good job making them attractive. It's sad that current buyers on the RX, in my opinion, if they want a halfway decent looking front end, the rest of the car I think looks great, but that grill on the base RX is terrible. But if you get the F-Sport model, it is stomachable. You can deal with it, it looks okay but the standard one, it's got to go. Okay, now that we got the grill out of the way, the styling, of course, that is the biggest ranting point I'm probably gonna have in this entire video by a long shot. Let's get into the next piece. I don't think they have to do much. I just said the rest of the vehicle looks pretty darn good and I, I stay with that opinion. Uh, the RX for most angles looks fresh, modern, edgy, still looks futuristic in some ways. Uh, they don't have to do drastic changes to the RX to keep it relevant in my opinion. Looking at this rendering, we can see a few noticeable changes. The headlights will be revised and updated. Expect them to be similar to the 19s, the 2019 ES triple beam headlights or even possibly uh, more modern than that. We might see a headlight change with the 2020 refresh, uh, but let's, let's assume that they're not going to do a headlight change. Let's assume that it's just going to be the bump, maybe the bumpers, the wheels, and maybe some minor interior differences with that 2020 refresh. Let's get back to the 2023 and what they, they could do. The fenders back in this concept image are much more aggressive, which would be, I think, a welcome change for the RX. Yes, the RX is very luxury oriented. Yes, I think they can still keep that even with more aggressive fender bodies. Um, I think it would look pretty good and differentiate itself a little bit more than the current one. And if they, if they, with this new platform, if they make the RX wider, then I think they can also make the fenders a little bit wider too for a more aggressive look. Tail lights, I really hope, are redesigned. They look okay now. They don't look anything special. I really hope they incorporate that LED strip that you see in the UX that goes all the way across. And it would be cool, and I'm probably just getting a little overzealous here, it would be cool if they incorporated some sort of repeating technology like you see in the LC, but I don't think they'll do that as much as my heart would want that. I think they might stick with that LED strip across similar in the UX, um, and maybe do some sort of similar tail light like you see in the LS instead of the LC. The next thing we're gonna cover is the power plants in the RX. This is arguably one of the biggest Achilles heel in the RX. Currently we just have two variants, the 350 and the 450H. This needs to be addressed if Lexus wants to continue to be the number one selling crossover vehicle. So let's dive in. The three and a half liter V6 should stay and it should stay as the base motor, except it needs to be bumped up to about 305 horsepower in my opinion. A modest 10, 10 horsepower gain over the current model is not asking too much. The hybrid model should be standard in my opinion with a plug-in with about 30 to 50 miles of electric only range. I think this is super important. Yes, their current hybrid technology is good and it gets 
quite a bit better gas mileage than the RX 350. If the Prius has a plug-in variant of the Prius, why can't we get a plug-in variant of its extremely luxurious older brother, the RX? I don't see why that would be difficult for them to do if they wanted to. And I think it's important in the current market as we're seeing, you know, plug-in hybrids from Porsche as well as Volvo. And I'm sure there's a lot other other ones out there that I'm just not thinking off the top of my head, but I think it's really, really important. And I know it's going to sell well. Why? Because the current hybrid is starting to sell extraordinarily well compared to previous years. The models are selling just so much more it's almost exponentially every year. They're going up and up and up, and the ratio between RX 350 and 450 is closing, right? Hopefully we get to, you know, to a time where the hybrids are higher, and then, I mean, that's just really the, the fade, the next step, I think, for the entire automotive world, not just for Lexus. Okay, so aside from the plug-in, so we have the RX 350, which would be the same motor, just maybe a little bit more hot horsepower than the current one. You have a plug-in, still called the RX 450H. It has a plug-in option, it's not necessary, but you can plug it in for electric range, right? I think that would be awesome. The majority of RX owners drive so little that they would never have to use gasoline. How cool would that be? Okay, so the next variant, the last variant I think they should make would be the range topping electric only vehicle. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Kirk, what about a turbo V6 or a twin turbo V6? Yeah, I think that would be nice, but the RX has never been about performance. And I feel like those motors would kind of push it more towards uh, its competitor, its, like, yeah, it's, it's competitors that are more performance oriented, like the BMW's M, M line and the, the AMG line of the Mercedes. I don't think Lexus really needs to compete on that scale with the RX. That's not what the RX is about. The RX is about the experience of a quiet, calm, just relaxing experience. And what better way if they're able to initiate it with a plug-in hybrid and then of course eventually go fully electric for the ultimate buttery awesome experience. Of course I feel like they need to maybe start it with a different model, but if eventually if we could get a fully electric version of the RX, I think it would do really well. And I think Lexus would probably sell out, to be honest. They would have a hard time filling uh, the demand with their inventory. So let me know what you guys think on that one. I know it's a bit of a stretch, but that's where I think the industry is going, to be honest, uh, in my opinion. Real quick, we're just going to mention transmissions. Of course, with any electric model or hybrid model, it's just going to have an eCVT or if it's fully electric, it'll just have, you know, that one speed transmission that you see in all the electric vehicles. So those are those transmissions. What about for the gasoline motor for the RX 350? Well, they have two options. They could go with the 10 speed that you see in the LC and the, R, uh, the LC and the LS. However, I don't think they need to go quite that far if they can fix their current eight speed transmission. Their current eight speed, if you saw my RX 350L video, which you can click somewhere around here. If you saw that video, the biggest downfall in my opinion, other than that unusable third row, was the very lethargic and slow downshifting transmission. And it upshifts quick. If you start at zero miles per hour and you start accelerating, it does a really good job, as it should, right? But if you're at speed and you try to downshift, or I should just say, if you hit the throttle and it tries to downshift on its own, it's just not a good experience. I have to wait what seems to be two seconds for the transmission to pick the right second. And that can be dangerous, you know? If you're trying to go through traffic, you can't wait on your car to be able to respond to your input. If you do, that can cause an accident. Accidents can cause cost live. So let's get back on track here. Transmission, fix the eight speed or give it a 10 speed from the LC and the LS. Simple, done, moving on. Next category we're gonna talk about, which is also a, a fan or non-fan favorite, 
is the infotainment. There is a lot of things Lexus needs to fix with the infotainment on the RX, let alone their whole lineup. So let's jump in. I haven't met anyone who truly enjoys the touchpad or the remote touch interface, whatever you want to call it, let alone the mouse input that you see on the RX, which is extremely dated. I think there's only two vehicles left in the three vehicles left in the Lexus lineup that have the mouse, which is going to be the RX, the LX, and I believe the GS still has the little movable mouse instead of the touchpad. The touchpad is a lot better in my opinion, but they both need to be revised or just done away with. I'm not 100% sure if the 2020 refresh will get rid of that little boxy mouse with the touchpad. I hope they do, but assuming they don't, what are they going to do for the 2023 redesign? Well, hopefully in 2020, they at least add Apple CarPlay and Amazon Alexa. I'm sure the percentage of people who use Amazon Alexa is probably like a tenth of a percentage, but at least they offer it. But you know what people really want? At least a ton of people want more than Android Auto, or more than Apple CarPlay is Android Auto. And Lexus needs to realize this, that a large portion of potential buyers have Android phones. And it's not just Lexus, it's the whole Toyota brand. They don't want to share their intellectual rights. I don't, I don't, I'm not a business lawyer or anything, but I know that Lexus and Toyota do not want to allow their vehicles to be accessed by Android products because they feel like they would have to give up too much of their information to work something out. And Lexus and Toyota don't want to give up on their very valuable information that's tied to their cars. That's why we haven't seen Android Auto in their vehicles yet. Okay, so what about the touchpad? What are they going to do? Well, I hope they don't go to that touchpad. I hope they get rid of the mouse and the touchpad and they go back to a touchscreen, which they used to have with all of their vehicles. The only current Lexus vehicle that has a touch screen is the GX, which is the oldest. It's irony is that they, they thought they were pushing the envelope and being safer for the driver and giving a, a better experience with this touchpad. And it's really, really, I don't have issues with it because I spend so much time with these vehicles that it's like, I just don't think about it. I'm able to control it very, very easily, but it's not that intuitive. You give anyone a touch screen, they can figure it out like that. It's so much easier and you don't have to fumble around with a third controller. There's, it's you in the screen instead of you, an object to control in the screen. It's just too much while you're in a car. And there are rumors of Lexus working on a touchscreen for the RX. I just don't know when they're gonna incorporate it. It could be in the next refresh for 2020, but I really think it's probably gonna be until 2023, unfortunately. Okay, so this is an infotainment section that we're in. So aside from the Apple CarPlay, Amazon, Alexa, Android Auto, and the, the implementation of touchscreens, what else should they do? Well, they need more connectivity. They need, all they have right now in the back of an RX, and this is not even in an RXL to my knowledge, is there's a 12 volt um, that is for the second row. In the RXL, I don't think they even have that, at least the one I was in the other day, didn't even have it to my knowledge. All RXs have another 12 volt in the very back, but there's no USBs, there's definitely no USB quick chargers. I don't know if that's something they can incorporate into the refresh. I feel like they have to and they should. If they don't, they're, they're screwed because there's, there's just no reason for that sort of simple implementation to be left out in this day and age. Like how hard can it be to put USBs in the second row? It cannot be hard. When you're a multi-billion dollar juggernaut and you cannot find a way to put USBs in there, you got issues. You're not listening and you're not catering to the current market. Also what needs to be put into the back row and the back seats is, I could care less for the power folding rear seats, but currently you can only get the art, well, more times than not, you see those power rear seats incorporated with the heated seats for RX. The problem is, 
Finding either one of those in a current RX is extraordinarily difficult here in the States. Um, I did a search with one of my coworkers yesterday and we looked for RXs that had heated seats in the second row. It is almost impossible for us to find one, um, at least in our region. We had to look within a 500 mile radius and even then there weren't that many. So that is inexcusable when heated seats are being put in Kias and Hyundais and pretty much every other automaker has heated rear seats and we're a luxury brand and we can't even put USBs, let alone heated seats in that second row in a $60,000 MSRP luxury beautiful car. Who's dropping the ball on that? I know I'm ranting a little bit, but these things are inexcusable in my opinion. These are the small things that add up to be much, much bigger in the grand scheme of things. Pricing, this one will, will be quick. Um, the base price, I think they should try to stay around 45 grand. Uh, the nav navigation model plus the all-wheel drive should probably be around 49 MSRP. Of course, finding that car is gonna be really hard because most of the time, currently our nav models are around 52, 53 with all-wheel drive because they put in a lot of those extra packages. The next one, which if oh, God willing, they make a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, I think that should start around 55. And then obviously with different packages go up from there. And if they make an EV only, I think that should start around 70 grand and then work its way up. But that sums it up for the pricing. I mean, it's all here. It's all conjecture at this point. So uh, let's just finish up this video. So for the 2023 20, model year refresh for the RX 350, the good news for Lexus is they don't need to do much. They have a one winning formula. They know what people want to buy and that that is pretty much the RX. People want to buy this crossover. It's just a so many things right, but there's so many things that they need to put into it to just make it perfect. Jumping to a new platform is going to help tremendously. I think it's going to give them a lot more customization options for the new RX. Minimal styling upgrades. They don't need to do much. It already looks great. Just address the grill with the things I mentioned before, and you're gonna have one of the best looking crossovers on the market. The addition of the plug-in electric vehicle must happen in my opinion, for them to keep up with the current times and the current automotive trends and moving industry. An all electric variant is a pipe dream. I don't know if they'll do something that radical. It might have to be after a couple other models, let's say if an LS, uh, comes out with it or their brand new LF1 Limitless comes to production that could probably be all electric. I think it'll eventually trickle down into the RX. The sooner the better though. Add Apple CarPlay, add Amazon Alexa, add Android Auto, add USBs in the back, add heated rear seats to be something that's easily orderable and accessible and attainable to the masses. Do all these things and the RX is pretty much perfect. It's close now. But all for if, if I'm able to make a video on on how to improve the next generation RX, that's I don't know, I have no idea how long it is at this point. It could be about 15 minutes. 15 minutes of me talking nonstop about how to improve the RX. I sure hope Lexus addresses these things. Yes, the RX is good, but it's far from perfect. And if they do these things, I tell you, they will not only stay number one for the top luxury crossover, they will put everyone else to shame. But we'll see what they do. They can't do all of these things because that would just be a perfect world, right? They're not gonna listen to this video. They could care less. They don't always listen to their customers, even though they're doing a better job of it. But I'll see you guys in the comments below. I know this has been a long one. Let me know what you guys think. What should Lexus do with the new RX? I know I've probably address most of them, but there could be things. I don't own the vehicle. So uh, there's some owners out there. I'm sure you guys would express your concerns uh, and wants in the new RX. Definitely put that down below. Hit that like button guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.